Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Breakdown, and that's, um, for Carl's behaviour last week. Carl, you seem to be a little bit happier. Last week, I mean, we were worried about you, you were. You sort of slipped into some sort of, like, weird depression. You played placebo twice, so you weren't concentrating. I know you're gonna say that, um, me and Steve were annoying you, but, you know, that's an easy excuse. I mean, I think the listener can make up their own minds. No, so, no, It's just like, like I say, though, it's like a murderer, right? He might not have done that if it was a different day, if the sun was out or whatever, and everything just happened at once that wound me up. Right. right? So it was, it was like a crime of passion. You, you'd be let off because those, those sort of circum- you, you'd never put yourself, say, in a position again where you'd, we'd have two people trying to wind you up <laughs> for, you know, the sake of- Fun and laughter for the public on a tin pot radio station between one and three every Saturday. Yeah, but You'd never do that again, would ya? Last week it wasn't just for the listeners, it was for you as well between twelve and one. Before even <laughs> on the air. <laughs> why? Why? You were winding me up then, do you know what I mean? Having a discussion. But it's alright. I'm a discussion. used to it now, I'm used to it, I'm used to it, so it doesn't yeah. matter. But so I found out that I can't do this job anymore, I can't do these sort of jobs where you've got to be happy all the time. We don't have to be happy all the time. Oh, you do, you do. You really. forget that. You forget that for the. Yeah, you but know I can't. Mean? Do you know what I mean? I've got things going on in my head. And <laughs> do, it, you, do you think when Bobby Dabros had a bad day that he doesn't go on stage and give one hundred percent? No, but that's. That do you think Les Dennis let all that stuff get in his way when he did that theatre tour to the the people he in had, front? He, in sometimes the, he had audiences of like seven, eight, fifteen people. Yeah, and he he just went. It's there. Not it's not my private life. Forget that. Bang! Yeah, okay. on him. Yeah. He, he can do that, but what I'm yeah. saying is I can't. He's a professional. So I was talking to Suzanne about it, cause, you know, it, it did get me down last Suzanne's week. Suzanne's your therapist? <laughs> <laughs> so saying, what, minder, um, yeah. Saying yeah. to her, you know, I can't, I can't do this sort of job. Normally what I do in the week, you know, I'm sucked away in a studio. If I'm annoyed, no one knows about it, I get my head down and get on with it. Wait, do you tell him. Go on. Next. I mean? Next. Next. Right, what, what, yeah, but sorry, so, but what's your point here? So every Saturday you've got to come here, you've got to- You've got to be happy, we've got to go, oh Carl, are you alright? Oh, you're right. Your hair looks nice. No, no, but you know what I mean. <laughs> That's the first time in it. Normally, people listening go, "He's a happy fella." Do you know what I mean? They it's never think you're a happy fella, Carl. Well. They've never heard you <laughs> laugh. <laughs> no one has ever. I seriously, we get emails all the time. No one's ever heard you laugh. Yeah, but never I, heard I, you I, laugh. I'm still happy. You don't have to. Well, are you? Yeah. You don't look happy. But anyway, that's that's the problem with this job, and um, I was thinking about it. If if <laughs> do you know like if you're a doctor? Sure. And. You're on a plane and something happens. Yeah. Yeah. Even though th you're on holiday. <laughs> yeah. You might have to save someone's life just because yeah. you can. Next! Yeah. And I'd be thinking, I'll keep quiet. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love that! Yeah. See, that's one of the reasons why you didn't actually qualify. <laughs> as, a, as a surgeon. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> you, yeah! I mean, you can still do your consultancy stuff. <laughs> oh, sure, but, yeah. But you know, you just don't actually yeah. want the knife in your hand anymore. <laughs> Brilliant. So you're giving this up, are you? So yeah. and how is, how is a doctor on a plane comparable to this? Cause that is just the same situation, do you know what I mean? He's yeah, probably got in his head, he's, he's, he's shut, shut off, he's yeah. ready for his holiday. He's going to Hastings for a night. Someone, you know, has a little bit of tummy trouble or heart attack or whatever. Yeah. And is he a doctor on the plane and he's like, oh, Jesus, yeah, he's going on holiday. Do you know what I mean? God, I've, got I've got to loosen his tie. <laughs> yeah. I can't but do that. But what I don't understand, Carl, is you get paid to do this. It's not like we're forced- it's not like it's your holiday. You, you know that this is your job of work. This is paying for your new kitchen. Exactly. Yeah, but I've got the kitchen now. Oh. It's done, isn't it? Right. Yeah. So, so job, when are you, when are you stopping? When are you quitting? Well, you're you're finishing, aren't you, in a couple of weeks for a bit? No, so. about four. four yeah, weeks. yeah, we finish on the sixteenth of August. Yeah, but we, you know we're only going away for like six or seven weeks again, aren't we? Well, you don't know, yeah, do you? Well, we'll give up if you give up. Tell you tell your managing directors that. Well, that's that's a bit annoying. Why? Because well, you've just passed the book, haven't you? I haven't passed the buck. This is this is three way. You know, you get your you get your name in heat. You're in the title now. It's Ricky Gervais, Steve Mason, and Carl Filkington. And now you want to go? I don't want to do it anymore. Oh, Carl, think about it. Think about it. I don't know whether you've noticed, but we don't provide anything on this show. <laughs> so if you leave, we have to go. <laughs> well, let's, let's put a song now on. Now just think. <laughs> don't be <laughs> so right, selfish. No. Don't be so selfish. Yeah. We need you. Yeah. We've got yeah. nothing. Think of the. Molly's Chambers, Kings of Leon. Brilliant. On XFM 104.9. So, I'm not gonna put pressure on you, Carl. I know you're scared to be saying this, right? But, um, I'll tell you what we do, right? We're, we're stopping this show on the 16th of August. We're, we're gonna film the, the Office specials, okay? And we'd be coming back, I don't know, uh, August, September, um, mid-October. Mm -hmm. 
if Carl does. Yeah. Now, I know that's pressure, but that's it. I think it is a, I think this is a three-way show. So you don't have to do it. We, uh, what should we do? Because we've- I know we've been approached by a couple of others. What would well, you we've do? Got, we, we've been approached by, uh, obviously, better radio stations. <laughs> um, I mean, just think of- I mean, if you're a listener, just think of any of the radio stations you prefer to listen to. That's some of the ones that have offered us gigs. <laughs> um, so we could toy with those. Or we stay and we see this through and we get XFM on the map. We get a few sound uh, I know, year. Rick, I know <laughs> you've had a passion since you started working at XFM to get the listeners into double figures. <laughs> I know that's what have been one of your ambitions, and I think it'll be a shame to give up so soon because you've done so yeah, much hard work. Yeah. Um, so uh, we, that's what we need to think about. I think you, so we've got what? We, so we've got four weeks left, and that might be four weeks forever and never coming back, yeah. or four weeks for like an eight week for, and that's for you to think about. So think if you enjoy the next four weeks, Carl. Yeah, but like I said to you though, hmm? the reason I did this yeah. was to get that kitchen, right? Now, brilliant. As we speak now, right? Builders in the flat. He's been annoying me. <laughs> of course he know. has. Of course he has. What's he been doing? Uh, well, when he when he turned up on uh, on Monday, right? Yeah. Wanders in, and the first thing he says to me is, uh, "Said the pub across the road is it any good?" <laughs> I said, "Well, it doesn't matter, does it? You're working on the kitchen." Think of saying that to a builder. Probably making conversation. Probably meant, do they do a, a, a toasted sandwich? Because I've got a half hour lunch break, not an hour, like Carl Bilkington. Mm, mm. So uh, I'll pop in there and get a nice, you know, cheese and tomato sandwich. You got genuinely what you said to me. Yeah. The you yeah said so to Su Suzanne had a go at me saying, "Why have you said that? He hasn't even started on it yet." I cannot believe that. that. You're unbelievable, Carl. And you say it's us that are rude, crass. I wasn't being rude. I just was. I just was letting him know. Do you know what I mean, I know what he knows. What he was there for. He had it down on his little docket, do the kitchen this week. <laughs> yeah, he didn't come there and go, what the f- what did I come out for? Was it to go to the pub for a week? Why am mm. I wearing these overalls? Yeah, who's the little bald man twat <laughs> insulting me? Let me just check, let me call the head office. I wasn't having a go though, I mean they should have finished it yesterday, and they're yeah. there now, right, yeah. on their own. And what annoyed me is they turned up late today. Hold on, Carl, I've just realised something. They're probably listening to the radio, this I assume tuned to XFM, isn't it, in your kitchen? Yeah, but- they don't know it's me, do they? Do you know what I mean? No. They'd go, he's got a whiny mank voice as well, so's the bloke who owns this place. And the bloke who owns this place, when I said, what's that pub like across the road, said, well you won't be bothering that, he's working on no, this. No, no, he, no, he won't be able to put two and two together, will he? You've suddenly, the penny's dropped, doesn't it? You've suddenly realised, look at his face! Yeah. He's suddenly realised they might know it's him! And they could be listening, and they're gonna clean you out, mate. Oh, if you are the builder, working in, uh, where is it? I won't say the address, but it's central London, isn't yeah. it? Go yeah, go mental. Have whatever you want. Opposite Seriously. that, opposite that pub that yeah. you like, that you're. That yeah, you're he'll probably be in there now, so he won't be listening. Oh, insulting! You know insulting I mean? a British insult. workman. He should so have been just in go mental. He should have been in at, at eight this morning. Just which annoyed go me anyway. mental. Why I don't, I really don't understand why they've got to start so early, right? Yeah. But he said he'll be there for eight. Turn up at half nine, yeah. right? Wanders in, and what annoys me is. He could have left all this downstairs. He had a paper under his arm, yeah. one of those crossword books, yeah. and a pot noodle. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not being funny, but most of them took a, quite a bit of time. A crossword book, he's not happy with just the one that's in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening, if you are the builder that's listening now, doing Carl's flat, what about pissing in the laundry basket? <laughs> Lonesome Day, Bruce Springsteen, on XFM 104.9. So, you've realised now that the builder could well be listening, knowing exactly who you're talking about. You can, there's, a, there's a chance of it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's, I didn't think about it, but you're right, you know, was tuned on to that. I think he did flick it on, thinking about it, thinking back. If so, yeah, he's, he's probably, he's probably listening now? No, he probably isn't. He probably listened to about half hour and if he's got any sense he turned it to heart or virgin or magic or something, but, you know, there is a chance. Good advice to the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you've got any yeah. sense, if you've finished yeah. your crossword puzzles. I, th I think, you know, according to our figures, there's a 5% chance of him listening to it. Yeah. So, uh, if we, you know, if we want to be accurate. <laughs> Although well, he's in a house with it tuned to that, so I think it gets, puts him right up to 50% yeah. straight away. But then away. again, Rick, he's got a job of work, so yeah. why would he be listening to this show? Well, he's doing a crossword at the moment. Yeah, well. You, right. you better hope he's not listening. Well, I mean, they do annoy me. I'll, I'm sticking, I'm sticking by it. Yeah, anyway, come on, you might as well keep digging. Yeah, go on. No, I'm just saying they, they do annoy me the way they, they wake you up at eight and then. Well, that's when they start work. Because I told you, I, I mean. Oh, we'll leave that one then. 
Yeah. No, but it's like the other day when- when they came in. I always like to test them, do you know what I mean? When I had some work <coughs> done on the last flat that was in, right, that was renting, the builders were in the, sorting the shower out and that. They woke me up about half past seven. Yeah. Right? Were you in the shower? No, no, I- Good I, thing I, about I, cleaning the shower, there's never any hair down the plug hole. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, I- I left early to come to work, right? Sure. Um, and I <laughs> thought, I wonder what they're doing. I wonder if they have started. So I walked back to go back in. They'd left the flat and they were outside having a Starbucks. <laughs> and it just annoys me that they couldn't do that first. Do you know what I mean? Have your breakfast first, then come and wake me up. But don't wake me up to then get me out of the flat and then say, right, let's go and have breakfast. Well, they've probably last. got to get in, haven't they? Didn't what they? for? What for? They can put all the tools in the- in the little lobby bit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just winds me up. Sure. Now the thing is, the guy today who's doing the tiling, oh, that's narrowed it down a bit more, <laughs> right? <laughs> When I knew he was in there, <laughs> I went out for a bit, had a cup of tea and a bacon butty, yeah. right, at a cafe. And I went back and I, kept, I was really quiet, put my key in the door and opened it really quick to see what he'd be doing. And he had actually started you, work, so fair play to him. What if he'd just been exfoliating himself naked on the kitchen floor? Yeah. I'd say, right, caught you. <laughs> Don't use my exfoliate, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well, people, people, instantly, if you're listening, go through the wardrobes upstairs. Go through the wardrobe, get some stuff, yeah. They won't get anything. I've, I've put everything in places where they wouldn't think of looking. For jewellery and stuff. So you're thinking that they- Where have you put the jewellery? Where can't, can't I'm not saying. Go on. So no, no, you're no. thinking that they're gonna thieve from you as well? Okay, so if you're listening, yeah, um, route, don't, no. don't think about the obvious places when you're looking for the jewellery. No. But I, I do things like, I would do things like, you know, uh, just pop a little bit of urine. Um, maybe in the salt cellar or something. Yeah. Just do something. I'd say what I do is I take the take the toothbrushes in the bathroom, just pop them in the toilet, flush yeah. it, and then yeah. take them back again, just pop them back in there. Leave them nothing, Le leave them out. When they were coming last week, I brought the biscuits to work. <laughs> and Suzanne was like, oh, no, you didn't really? no, mates. You no, brought I your biscuits, I brought biscuits. Work. No, 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 it wasn't a tin, it was just a, a packet of good quality cookies. <laughs> Quality cookies. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you thought I'll be down with the Oh then. God! But oh. that's what Suzanne always says. Don't know, you know, why why you like this? Because yeah. you know, it's not as if you've been sort of harmed as a kid or anything. Mm. But I like the fact that you once said to us that you don't need friends. You don't like friends because they're a bit of a pain. Because they call you up and they want to be with you. Yeah, but, but mates are a hassle. I woke up today, right? <laughs> and uh, I think it was on. Might have been on Five Live or something this morning in the bedroom, right? And uh, they were talking about how oh, it's Nelson Mandela's birthday. Yeah. Eighty odd. Eighty-five. Twenty thousand people turning up at his party. I thought <laughs> I'm glad I'm not in. <laughs> I couldn't be doing with that. Twenty thousand people. <laughs> Think of the carpet afterwards. I mean, a good percentage of them will put in out fag butts on his carpet yeah, after definitely. Tommy Walsh and um, Charlie Dimmer, what's her name, did lovely, the lovely patio and a water feature. It's going, he's going to come back and he's going to go. Oh, it's ruined. And what's he doing for his birthday? Karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese meal, bit <bit> karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what I wonder what Nelson Mandela's birthday party is like. Big cake. Bit of an enormous cake. Yeah. Some well, the spice girls it. jumping out. Yeah, the spice girls, isn't it? Well, yeah. well everyone. I don't know. Yeah. We, we are the only three people that hasn't met him. Yeah. I thought, I thought everyone's file would have been in the cake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, just in case you never know. And uh, <laughs> if Winnie calls, I'm not here. <laughs> have you not invited her? No, of course I. No, definitely not. Poor Nelson. Happy birthday. How old no. is he? 85. Oh, well done. Well done. <laughs> no, God bless him. God bless him. Oh. 85 today. Oh. Right, bit of uh, Songs of Phrase next, then, yeah? Do you reckon? Oh, well, really? What's that one? Play in a minute. Mm -hmm. right. Everybody says that they're looking for a shelter. Silence is Easy by Star Sailor on XFM 104.9. So it just suddenly struck me something. I don't know if I mentioned it before. You mentioned um, that you, you tried to catch your uh, your guy out when you came back once. You, you opened yeah. the door really quickly yeah. to see what he was up to. Did yeah. I ever tell you when I was at university? Now I'm very tall and I've got enormous feet, size 14, 14. size 14 shoes. And when I was at university, uh, everyone it seemed to me was wearing Dr. Martens. It was like you, you had to wear a pair of Dr. Martens. It was kind of the rule. Dr. Martens was too big for you. Yeah, so that's a big pair of Dr. Martens. That's like. That's where the myth of the old woman who lived in a shoe. I, think, I came know from, people with my size shoes. Anyway, I um. I just literally kind of moved to university. I'd been there for like literally a couple of months. And obviously in that first period you're quite keen to kind of, you know, reinvent yourself, be, you know, strike yourself, you know, try and give an impression of perhaps being quite sophisticated, worldly, cool, all those things that, you know, you've, you've left behind all your childhood friends so you're trying to, you know, develop something. He didn't bother, he didn't. 
Was I? You didn't bother? No, 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 I was working hard on it and I was kind of, you know, I was doing all right, you know, and I had my tie-dye shirt. No, <laughs> you know, I was looking good. And, um, so I was trying, you know, working hard to try and seem kind of cool and, uh, not freakish. And, um, I came back from, uh, from studies once and I came in and there's a little old cleaning lady that kind of would always come in every day and clean up our halls of residence. And I came back and my, uh, door of my, my room was open and there was like a little huddle of people just peering in, right? And I went, well, I thought this is odd, you know, that, that my door's open and there's, and I'm not in there and there's people staring in the door. And I looked in. And the little cleaning lady had my Dr. Martens on and was clumping around. Making them all laugh. Doing, making them all laugh, doing an impression of me. That's amazing. Imagine and that's, that. Imagine, imagine the, the psychological first... scars that that has. I know that the she's more popular than you. Yeah, exactly. And they go, and they go come on, Maud, let's go to the JCR. <laughs> exactly. And they carry her down. They go, drink, 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 <laughs> drink, drink. <laughs> and, you, and she goes to, Steve, you better have that spotless by the time I come back. <laughs> You go, all right, I will, all right. But what I like is the fact that I'm sure that that's part, that's not part of the cleaner's code. The cleaner's code is you don't have <laughs> the keys to everyone's room so you can go through their belongings and, and play practical jokes. I mean, surely uh, it's a kind of, you know, it's a trust. She must have looked like a wall bracket with that, with that. <laughs> I went bowling with him once the first time and he, and we went bowling at this place. Where was it? I mean, Finsbury Park. Mm. And, uh, I'd never been before. And he's got to wear special shoes. I went, all right. He went, um, uh, so and so and so. He goes, have you got size 14? And she went, yeah, I've got one pair. And she put them on the table and they look like crusty. <laughs> honestly, they're, they're, honestly, it looked like the heart. It was, it, I just started laughing. Cause they look, they're so long and thin anyway. And they're multicolored, aren't they? They're t two colors. And it looked like crusty's, it's crusty the clown's mm. feet. And then, the, and this dude just went, all right, all right. <laughs> 14, that is big, it isn't is it? It's a huge size shoe. You're right, yeah. And it was just the one cleaner in them. <laughs> just the one family. She did have loads of kids eventually and brought them up in, yeah. there. <laughs> in there. Well, yeah. we've got songs of phrase, right, haven't we? songs of phrase then. Um, okay, let's uh, just have a look at the prizes. Let's just remind us again what exactly songs of phrase is, because I know a lot of people put it out of their mind week by week. It's a phrase that's, you know, been said on the show a few times, <laughs> right? Oh, um, but you remember classics, like, uh, what was, what was, what was- We've had hairy Chinese kid. Yeah, there's, there's this hairy Chinese kid. Stop squeezing me, Ed. Stop squeezing uh, me. Carl, you're an idiot. Carl, you're an idiot. Yeah. Uh, you know, some cl cl classic phrases. Classic phrases. And so you use various old time songs and you put them all together and that spells out the phrase. Uh, before we, uh, we, we play that, let me tell you now, you can win. <laughs> Look forward to this. What's this? The new album from the Star Spangles. That's called Bazooka. Is that out, is it? Never heard of it. When's Bazooka out? <laughs> never, heard, never heard of it. Never heard of it. <laughs> uh, the best summer holiday album in the world ever. You've got th the treats on there include the Fast Food Rockers and oh. uh, Laz Ketchup. Yeah. I'm um, waiting for their second single because I, I don't know what that's going to be about. Sure. <laughs> uh, uh, is it going to be a bit more fast food? Maybe like pret a -Mange? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Uh, this is very good. Yeah, two discs set, the best of David Bowie. Um, in Spiral Carpets, the best of them. Still don't know how they spring that over, over three seasons. <laughs> no idea. Um. <laughs> Bowie's is one. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, we mentioned it last week, the American Song Poem Anthology. That's kind of a kooky collection of, uh, of songs. And, uh, we've also got a couple of DVDs here. Stephen King's Rose Red. I've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to video. <laughs> yeah. Made for television. Yeah, yeah. And we'll never be seen at the cinema. And I know, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of nerdlingers listening, so they will be loving Richard Dean Anderson in Stargate SG-1. Yeah. Uh, free inside, there's a collector's card, plus you can win some exclusive memorabilia. Brilliant. So I think a pair of, uh, there Right, all you've got to do is listen to these, like, 13 songs, <laughs> probably, to write a well-known stupid <laughs> phrase. It's only seven, seven different songs, right? Well, just get the most you can, just get be rough, artist or song, it'd, it'd do, right? And the and phrase is, um, about me dad nicking from, uh, telephone boxes, right? You've got to give them a clue, because they've got to get, they've got to know what they're listening for. It's, it's hard enough when you know. Daddy's never gonna stop robbing from telephone box. Is that it? Yeah. Right. So what are these, what are these songs then? Uh, uh, go on then. It doesn't matter that some people don't know what that's about, do they? Doesn't matter. No, they're not, they're not, well, they're, well, they're your father's a thief. <laughs> email only, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Let's hear it. Alright. Daddy! From... Right. Also not, um, grammatically correct, <laughs> no. but, so it's, Daddy, Daddy, never gonna stop robbing from telephone box. <laughs> Rubbish. Unbelievable. Play again. We, oh. I think we just need the song, that's all we're after. Yeah, yeah. just the songs. Right. Daddy, never gonna stop robbing 
from Just again? Well, this is a well, desperate feature, it? Isn't really it really is awful. <laughs> from See, Rick, if we took more of an interest in this show, we'd have come in, listened to that, we'd and said, said no way. Play. We'd have said, no way are we doing that. I don't care how long you spent on it. We've got a reputation. Yeah. We've won awards. We've won major awards. We're not putting that tat out. But yeah, no. You know, we, that's what- that's what- But happens. we're just giving the listener what they're used to. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, I think more fool them for listening. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk Eminem. Business on XFM 104.9. Carl, can I ask, because after last week's uh, show when you had your breakdown, um, you went off to Hastings with your uh, girlfriend, stroke carer, <laughs> Suzanne. Um, now what does she, because whenever we meet Suzanne, we bumped into Suzanne recently at the BBC, Ricky and I, she's always very nice to us, very polite, we have a nice little chat, but I'm always wondering what is it that she thinks of us really, you know, because I'm assuming you immediately go home and whinge. Say about they tortured me, you saw they tortured me on air. Now what does she- what does she make of us? Did uh, she listen to the show last week? Yeah, she did, yeah. She knew- she knew I was annoyed. She, right. So, she sort of gave me a look like, you yeah. know what I mean, like that, when I- cause we went to- That Eastern, wasn't because so. you had like Marmite or something over your face. No, no, it was like, <sighs> So yeah. we didn't talk for a bit, I just was like, you know, getting over it. Sure. Thinking, I'm sick of this. Yeah. Right? Uh, you know, is the- is the new kitchen really worth it and all that? I phoned him up and left a message after the show. I said, you seemed a bit quiet when you left. I just want to make sure it wasn't anything I said. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh. no, no one, You're no still one... doing your, uh, your Samaritan's work? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, it, and uh, did it, did it ring or did you just ignore it and go to the answer machine? I think I turned it off. <laughs> I left it off, didn't I? Yeah. I just left it off all day and But what did she make of us? Does she genuinely think, does she not really like us? I said, it's weird because there's no one who, uh, who she doesn't really like, which annoys me, because she says to me, well, she says to me, I'm, I'm the opposite, do you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, everybody annoys you. Yeah. And it's like, well, but that's, that's my choice, right? Sure. And that's why I don't bother getting mates and that, because sure. it's just hassle. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. But the problem is, sometimes me being like that affects stuff that she wants to do, so, you know, if a mate- Like see her family and friends. Yeah. Well, let, let's not say you're family or friends, but say if one of the mates had a baby. <laughs> right. Right? Right. I mean, you know- it, Naming no names. No. So this happened? Well, I've just got to You've got watch what I'm you doing, haven't I now? Because of all- The builder who knows you're slagging him so, off and saying so he needs stuff. Yeah. So, you know, she's got a few mates who have had kids recently. Right. Yeah. So, right. Oh, so one of them had a kid, yeah, go on. Right. And, uh, she wanted to go and see it, right? And she said, you can come with us, and I was like, oh, you know, you know what I feel about babies. Sure, you've seen one, you've seen them all. Yeah. So, they all uh, look like Mouse Smith. Why do I need to see another one? Yeah. Right? And she's like, yeah, but come and see it, you know, you get on with them. Mm. Come see them. And I was like, it's, mm, it's a long way away. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. really narrowed it down again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, so, and, and that, that annoys her, because I, I can't be bothered. Do you know what, what did you quite? say? Did you say, oh, no, I'm not coming to see him, I don't, don't I'm like I'm not him. going all the way to, uh, to Swindon. What did she, what did she, what did she, <laughs> did he, uh, yeah, yeah, or Birmingham, or, uh, or Cornwall. Uh, yeah, well, 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 you, you know who you are, if you had a baby, yeah, sort but, of in the but, last time, and, and, and Carl didn't show up, and Suzanne said, what did, what Suzanne, what, what, the excuse did she say? You were working or busy or? No, well, to be fair, I was yeah. working, right? And yeah. they are nice people and stuff. Oh, now you're backtracking, because no, now, well, do they listen? Do they listen to the show? They might, they might do. So you know they listen to the show, so once again, you've caught an anecdote where the people who you've admitted to not liking to see their baby no, or care no, about no, them no, no, are no. listening to the show. No. Maybe, it's, uh, I don't know, maybe the builder's listening no, once they're again. They're nice people, I like them. Just, 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 like, like just, just sneeze in the chilli pot. When the kid's older, I'll go and see them. Sure. Yeah. Just, do you know what I mean? When it's got its own little character. As a baby, it could be any baby. Do you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> It's got nothing yeah. to offer me. I know what you mean, I know what you mean. It could be a toy baby. But you know what I mean? It could be a bag of sugar. No, I know what, I know what you mean, yeah. yeah. When it can start talking and, you know. <laughs> you can play around with it. Yeah. It's got, yeah. got good toys and stuff. It's well worth yeah. going, but at the yeah. moment. Yeah, nothing. I'll see it, I'll see it when it's about six. You go, oh, you want to Yeah, brilliant. Put it to bed, let's have a game of Scrabble. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, that's, you know, that's what we were talking about on that, on our way to Hastings last week for me. You know, that's where I went to chill after the. 
caused us to And that's where you decided yeah. you couldn't give 100% to the public if you weren't having a good day, like me and Steve do. Come rain or shine on a tin pot radio station that really doesn't, you know, keep keep me in um, frappuccinos these <laughs> days. Um, <laughs> well, but we'll say we'll say once again on air. This is official, and this is not to put pressure on you. That um, me and Steve are going away for a couple of months on the 16th of August to uh, do the uh, office special. And if Carl doesn't come back, nor will we, because I see it as a three-way thing, and that's the truth. Rick, you said that a couple of times now, as though you're expecting a flood of emails and calls. Nothing. No, I'm just trying to get in pressure There's because because I know for a fact that they obviously they want us to to come back, and yeah. I know. I think maybe <laughs> not the listeners though. No, the listeners don't care. They don't care. Just couldn't give it. They don't yeah. care. Who stands in? Do you know what I mean? Instantly, what frequency is magic? It's uh, one o five point four. Worth checking out because I yeah. had a great heart is one o six point two. I think oh, uh, virgins. No, virgins uh, one o five point. Uh, a good station. What is that? 105.8. Yeah. Which yeah. is well, which check is press good. Well, for details, but uh, yeah. we're watching cable TV, there's some good stuff on. Yeah, Kiss is 100, that's easy to remember. <laughs> um, there's a new Ride album out, gentlemen, I think you're probably quite excited. It's, um, London's Heart 1, a 6.2. Um, it's released on the 4th of August and it's all the BBC <laughs> sessions, all the stuff that Ride did, um, over the years for- Virgin. 105.8 for BBC and um this is one of them it's called Time of a Time I think it was from the album Going Blank Again it's very good play it Carl <laughs> I play that for Pippa, who requested some ride. That's from a new compilation called Waves, uh, and it's the uh, BBC recordings that uh, Ride made during the 90s. And I think that was originally recorded for uh, BBC Radio One. That's a good station. A Radio bloody One. good station. That's a good station if they're interested. Radio One. So one of the. I think they pay quite well as well. Well, I enjoyed working for them. I know we used to work for them for a period of time until we, we got fired yeah. for slagging off Simon Mayo. I think it was Simon Mayo. Yeah. Do you remember that? I can't quite remember it. Well, we used to do this thing, uh, Mary and Hobbs at night, and, um, uh, we st we were, we were getting a bit busy, and so we were constantly handing in shoddier and shoddier work. Right, we used to hand it like that and hand it to them. A theme and there. A theme, I know, yeah. And to the point where they kept going, oh, like every other way to go, we couldn't put it out. Why? Well, because it was the most offensive, or it was inaudible, or it was twaddle, or you didn't record it. You know, yeah. there was things like that. Yeah. There. And then the, the, um, I think the, uh, the straw that broke the camel's back was, um, Simon Mayo had just broken the world, Guinness world record for, um, DJing. Uh, and we were going, oh, that's brilliant, yeah, in an air-conditioned studio with loads of scrotes getting cappuccinos for him. That's not work. Our dad used to bin walls, or build walls, you know, that's work, not sitting down. If he wants to break a record for work, and we went off some things like, I, I know, <laughs> We were going, we know birds who do leather stuff to f feed their smack addiction. Yeah. That's work. Well, I, want, I want to see Mayo on his knees outside McDonald's giving a rent boy a blowjob and all yeah. this sort of stuff. I want to see him hanging up in some kind of leather strap. In a to Amsterdam torture garden with 13 blokes jizzing on him, all with beards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But why, why aren't you still there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, oh happy dear. days. I think happy the producer days. at the time said, um, we can't. I said, why not? He went, I said, we're not saying he did it, we're saying we'd like to see him do it. Yeah. Right? And, uh, she went, oh, he's a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> All the more reason. <laughs> well, we were talking, um, earlier about, uh, friends, you say you don't like making new friends, do you? You're kind of repulsed by the idea of, of new friends, because it's too much responsibility. They might phone you up, they might ask you for a favour, mm. they might need a shoulder to cry on, you don't want any of that responsibility, mm. any of that concern. But I'll tell you what's worse than, than making, uh, new friends is when old acquaintances come out of the past. Oh, I, pop up. It really unnerves me. I, cause I'm constantly bumping into people who I just don't recognise. I know. And I, I always, I've got this urge to be polite. I can never just go, I don't know who you are. I've always Nor got can to I. pretend. I, 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 I've looked for clues. When hmm. they say, you still, uh, don't know, I go, yeah, so I go, right, and what about so and so? I go, so you know, those two people, and it's like a yeah. sort in my brain going, ah, oh, mu I must know them from so and so. Yeah. Well, I went, I went, I went back to Bristol once, and I remember, um, walking to the bus stop and seeing someone I recognised from school and walking all the way to the next bus stop just so I didn't have to stand there and make conversation because I, I just know. thought I've got nothing. Where's the conversation? I didn't is the know worst you bit. then. If you're moving, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What can we talk about? We've got nothing in common except the fact that we went to the same school. I was I on know. a train station platform fairly recently and a guy comes in and goes, oh, Steve, how's it going, mate? 
And I looked at him, stony face. I had no idea it was. But of course, I had to go, good mate, good, how are you? How are you? And you know, I, I kind of, I had a newspaper and I kept looking at the newspaper thinking, every time I look at this newspaper, it's a, it's a clue for you to just walk <laughs> oh away. God. But he never took the clue. He never took it. So it was kind of, I'd say, oh yeah, not bad, not bad. I'd read uh, the paper and he'd go, oh, where are you living at the moment? So I'd tell him and he'd say, yeah. Yeah. and I'd look at the paper again. Oh, do you still know, um... But, oh. but, but that's what, when you know they are, it's just as bad, because mm. they, they go, oh, we should have a drink sometime, and you want to go, oh, I'll be honest, look, if I don't want to get in touch with you, I have loads of opportunities. <laughs> exactly. I've had every day, from, yeah. from now, right back to the last 15 yeah. years, I could have made contact. I didn't. Exactly. It's easy. <laughs> Take that as yeah. a clue. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, yeah. If you are listening <laughs> to this, and you <laughs> perhaps know me from school, or <laughs> yeah. university, yeah. you're thinking of getting in touch, yeah. do not bother. Ditto! Ditto! <laughs> I do not need your friends. You've got enough friends. Better ones. Better friends. I've got a number <laughs> of better friends that I prefer. The reason I have not kept in touch is because I don't really like it. You've moved onwards and upwards. Moved on. I know people now, the likes of which have won major awards. Ricky television. Gervais, Ricky to Gervais. name but one. He's Let happy. He's sat right here next That's to me now. That's all the friendship a man needs. If you have, if you have won four BAFTAs, yeah. then give me a bell. If yeah. you have not, kindly stay in your little, and underneath <laughs> your particular rock. <laughs> Because we're not interested. We have kept you out of our lives for a reason. I did not accidentally uh, uh, lose your number. Uh, when I promised to send you a letter, it did not. It did not get lost in the post. Nothing gets lost in the post. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. Carl, what do you think of that? It's all right. I'll start by. I'm I'm honest with them though. When sure. I see them, do you know what I mean? I just say. I don't know who you are. Can't remember <laughs> you. <laughs> not bothered. <laughs> I'm not bothered. <laughs> Know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that is genius! Anyway, bit of darkness. Oh well, I've got to play this now. Be, be warned. This is a rock ballad off the new Darkness album. I, I love the love the album, and it's a bit cheeky playing this because it's got shades of Def Leppard, mm -hmm. right? But there's a lovely balalaika bit in it, and it's quite a nice song. Right? And it's the darkness, and they they can get away with this sort of thing for at least another four months. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Cardigans, you're the storm on XFM 104.9. <laughs> if anyone from Heart or Magic or Radio 1 or Radio 2 is listening, could well be available come October. Yeah. All right. Please get in touch. Yeah. Um, I think that my new TV is too big, Rick. I said that I know, when you bought I don't it. Know what I was thinking, but I, I, I can't believe it. He talks about this buying it. He's got a bit of cash now, of course. And uh, what is it? Forty-two inches. Mm. 42 inch plasma screen, wouldn't it cost you three grand or something? Oh, don't tell that's, that's, that's Wow, it's three ridiculous. Enough, three, enough three and a half grand, big spender. Uh, of course it's too big. Well, I can't get far enough back in my room, in my living room for it. You know, you know it, for, you're meant to be, I think, four times the screen size away from it. Really? To get out of the air. So that's four times 42 inches you're meant to be sitting away from it, which is impossible. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'll have to just get friendly with the neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch it through a hat. <laughs> yeah. if, if, if that's the case, though, aren't you better off just getting a portable? What? I don't understand that rule. What, what, to get... what are you saying? Well, you're meant to be four times the screen size away from the TV. Well, that's then what's the, the, the point in having a big telly if you've got to keep moving further back? Get a portable <laughs> and sit, and sit near it. <laughs> Is that how they sell it? Is that what they say to you? Well, no, it's a rule, but I see, I do see your point. Why do people go to the cinema then? Did you see films that aren't out yet? <laughs> Fair enough, he's got you there. Dom. I tell you this though, <laughs> I had it delivered and um, I, are you supposed to tip delivery men? Of course you I are. I don't know. You well, said, well, if I've I, never had anything delivered before. Well, no, not if, it, not if it's a courier with an envelope, but if it's a bloke who's struggled up the stairs I two, the two fat him. blokes with a fridge, then give him a fiver for a drink. But, but the but problem was, I didn't realise, and I was thinking to myself, I wonder if I've got to tip him, and the guy was leaving, and my mobile phone went off in my pocket, yeah. and I reached in to get it, he put his hand out thinking it was a tip, I went, oh, it's just my phone. Oh. And I felt terrible after he left. I didn't know. I, I, what was I going to do? Run down the street and now for him a fiver? No. No, of course not. No. I'm not made no. money. I just spent it all on <laughs> TV. <laughs> yeah, I got no money, mate. No. I just spent it all on yeah. this. I had to clean out my jar, exactly. everything, the drawers. Yeah, I had to take some, um, yeah, bottles back. What, what, but you, what I, the problem was it took me forever to wire it in. I thought I'm not going to pay for someone to wire it up, you know. So it took me about three hours to wire it in and it was huge and I got it switched on 
and the first programme that was on when I got it wired in was Bargain Hunt. I'll tell you this, David Dickinson's tan almost took me eyeballs out. <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible. It was just, oh, it was like, <laughs> it was like x-rays. Destroy so the close. glove. You know, a, a huge plasma screen with this orange thing yeah. coming out. And he keeps, and he keeps turning to the camera, <laughs> course, doesn't he? Just grim. to get you. Yeah, he turns away. You get a bit close. They go, what's he doing? And he just turns <laughs> around, <laughs> yeah. takes the cornea off. What do you think Bargain Hunter is Bargain Hunter? <laughs> Oh dear, well, that's why I'd buy a plasma screen to watch, um, to watch Bargain, Bargain Hunt. Hunt. I mean, it's because this is the problem, is because you, yeah, what do you I watch? Mean, have you watched anything that's been worth having? The I only mean, thing I've watched really worth watching. 24. Well, on, yeah, on 24 works great. But yeah. also films, obviously, that's the main reason mm. I bought it, because films just look amazing on the Yeah, DVD on, on yeah. the plasma yeah, screen. So if you're into films and that, yeah. it's just that I only, you know, I've just got the, got the five channels and flicking about. And I'm, I'm not impressed. <laughs> I mean, I can understand why more people listen to radio and stuff. Yeah. Cause well, not this one, but go on. Well. I th when was it? When was, uh, the last time I sort of sat down and had time, cos I'm always busy doing stuff on that. Sure. Um. Moaning takes up about three hours a day. Mm. When did, when did Wimbledon, uh, finish? A couple of weeks ago. Right. Found myself sat there, right, and I'm not having a go. I know we stopped Cheeky Freak of the Week and all that, right, so Christ. I'm not, I'm not gonna be having a go. Christ. I sat there. I'm scared. No, I'm not having a go, you've always got to remember that. Come on, just, just get on with it, get on with it, I'll apologise after. I'm just saying, watching Wimbledon, it wasn't, uh, you know, one of the major games, it was, uh, right. little fellas in a, in a wheelchair, having a, having a game. Little fellas in a wheelchair. Right. But, for me, I mean, you know, great, they're doing a sport and everything, but don't put it on the telly. <laughs> <laughs> what was up with it? It wasn't, there wasn't, like, a rally going on. <laughs> No, do you know what I mean? Do you know oh, normally, Christ. like, with the, with the, with the, well, not to Enman, but with some of the <laughs> other, <laughs> with, with some of the other players and that, they're playing for ages, aren't they? It's like, yeah. oh, who's gonna win this and that? Yeah. None of that. It was just like, hit it, net. <laughs> oh, Christ! Oh, God! I don't know what to do! What, 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 what? And people, people would like, sat there watching it as well, when they've got other games going on in there, that's what I couldn't understand. If you've paid your money to oh, get God. in, yeah. I mean, like I say, good on them if they do you know what I mean? But it would have been- I And they know, all I, start first in the marathon. I just thought it would have, you know, give them a game of swing ball or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? No, yeah, 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 I understand. Oh, yeah. God. There's never anything else. XFM on. in the community. <laughs> Can anyone confirm? Actually, I had an email earlier, um- Swing ball? <laughs> no, I'm not having a go, though. Tell them. This is what I'm like, aren't I? You're, that, sorry, this is recording you as well. What do you mean I'm not having to go tell them? Do you, what you no, think well, you just said you that to I mean? me? That you, do you think you haven't got a microphone? You just said to London, keep wheelchair sport off the telly because they can't get a rally going. You called them little fellas in wheelchairs. What? And I meant to go, what Carl meant was? What? I mean, what? <laughs> they can hear you as well. Yeah, I know. It's just that they might think that I'm, I'm having a go and I don't want them to. That's why I stopped Cheeky Freak of the Week because some people got the wrong end of the stick. Right. And what have you? So well, it was funny that a woman was born with deformed legs. They might think you were taking the mech. <sighs> so anyway, I just was wondering if anyone could confirm. We had an email earlier. I forget who sent it in, but thanks very much indeed for it. They said that the Paralympics began this week, and apparently, what during the opening show, the entertainment was provided by Riverdance. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know. I, I don't know if that. I can neither confirm nor deny that, but it does seem rather tactless. <laughs> Let's play a tune. <laughs> Ricky Gervais, <laughs> Ricky Dodd Gervais. XFM. Don't put my name <laughs> to this last link. <laughs> Don't put my name to this last link. Ricky Dodd Gervais, XFM. UK. Oh. Magic Virgin, if you're listening, we are available probably sooner than we thought. <laughs> Making plans for Nigel. XTC on XFM 104.9. Well, you seem a little bit happier. No? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was, it was all right. I'm a bit worried. I, but like I say, the last thing that we just talked about, I don't want people thinking, you know, we're having a go at anyone, because that, it does do me adding. Because I'm the one who always has to deal with it as well when people do. What? You know, we're just talking, having a chat about tennis and stuff. Yeah, the little fellas in the wheelchair, as you put it. Yeah, what are you worried about? Like, that just that they think we're having a go on that, because... Sometimes I, I do have to take calls and deal with it, all this stuff, right? You don't see that. You don't see the hassle I have to go through. No, but I, I, I don't um, often say things where I, I'm likely to get a complaint from Yeah, someone. but I'm just saying it wasn't meant to be taken badly, do you know what You're I mean? allowed to say you thought that the quality of tennis, yeah. because they were confined to a wheelchair, was poorer than, say, Sam Press versus Agassi. I, I don't think that's 
in question. It wasn't as good a game of tennis. That's mm. what all you were saying. And you weren't saying they shouldn't play or- Wreck the, was... wreck the grass. <laughs> right, Matt. <laughs> well, stop while no, you're No, I'm, I'm just saying as well. Like, just- I can well, confirm, incidentally, we've had several emails, I can confirm that Riverdance opened the, uh, Paralympics in Dublin recently. So, um, I'm sure that was very good for entertaining. Leave it. Leave it then. Yeah. No, I'm sure it was entertaining. They are very good. It was it the thought, was it Jimmy that thought it was short for paraplegic Olympics? Really? I've no idea. Yeah, it's parallel, it's parallel Olympics, isn't parallel it? It's Olympics, yeah. Right. But uh, uh, as we pointed out, that would be pretty much yeah. blow football. Yeah, yeah. There wouldn't be many sports in the paraplegic Olympics. It stands <laughs> for parallel yeah. Olympics. I'm educating, Carl. Don't let me like I'm educating. I'm not saying funny little fellas in I wheelchairs putting on the grass. There. What? I'm always educating and I'm always telling you about stuff that I learn about and that. That you get off hand and over and it's no, about a monkey no, who became no, king. No. So is. No? Have you got monkey news this week? Got a little bit of monkey news coming up. What does he do? Drive to Spain, rob a bank, go get married? No, we're done, we're done all them, aren't we? <laughs> We have done all them. Yeah, but you one, know no, it's a good one, it's a good one. And in fact, it's a bit related to what we've been talking about, oh anyway. Oh, God. That's, that's good. That's okay. Good. Last week, after your nervous breakdown, yeah. um, you went to Hastings. Yeah. Can yeah. I ask, why the hell did you go to Hastings? It's so arbitrary. What do you mean? Why go to Hastings? And I you lost it on arbitrary. <laughs> why did you choose that above all other places within- It's amazing, isn't it? You look at his face when you say a word <laughs> that, that, you know, he doesn't understand and it just goes dead. It's yeah. like when your computer freezes. Yeah, it is like- it is like that, yeah. Is there- is there an equivalent to, uh, control, alt, delete when oh, Carl no. just doesn't understand? So we have to press, like, um, knob, bollock, finger up arse. It yeah. takes him out of his sort of stupor, doesn't it? Now that's three uh, things to press, but you've only got two hands, so- Wow. Yeah, I know. God, what would I do? I I, so I'd have- hold on, so I could have the thumb- the thumb of my right hand, I'd pop that up- up his ass. I'd have my- probably my index finger of my left hand on his knob. How would I press his- his testicles? Pressing. What would I use? I'd have to use some other part. Should we try it? Yeah, let's go let's around there. Let's try it. Let's go around. Look, come on. <laughs> what? Sit down. Just think it's time you're going to have a little kiss. Sit down. Sit down. I've already had a little, uh- What happened, Carl? He loves it, he loves it. I'm just going to give you a little kiss. Just for the webcam. Right, hurry up then. All right, on the on the lips. No, no. Oh, come no. on. <laughs> oh God! I love it because he hates it so much. You won't get that radio on. But it makes sense. Could have kissed Chris Moyles. What? Could have kissed Chris Moyles on radio. What Moylesy? Give Moylesy a little kiss for all his good work. Do you enjoy that? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. What happened to Chris Moyles' show? Is he not on anymore? On the TV? Yeah. No. Turns out he was too fat and talentless. Um, <laughs> do you want to tell us about Hastings? <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> eh? What? Yeah, Hastings. Yeah. It's, uh, it's alright, yeah. Um, <laughs> what's there? Not much. <laughs> it's just one of them Is there places. A beef? Yeah, yeah, it's got, I think that's what's good about it. Nobody knows, right? Because last weekend it was roasting and, and you saw pictures of Brighton mm. and it was heaving. Yeah. Right? Hastings? <laughs> hardly anyone there. And yeah, it's got a nice, nice little beach. Yeah. Um, sand? Sandy No, beach. pebbles. Well, right. that's all right, isn't it? You don't, well, no. you don't want the sand. Why do you want sand? What do you want? Just a little bit, don't it? It's murder building a sand castle. No, no, you just, just sit yeah, there. But you can't walk on pebbles, can you? It's, you no. know, well, it's all kind of, it's sort of a bit, you know, ah, dodgy it's underfoot. It's all right. The only annoying thing is, right, if, <laughs> it's one of them places that it's great to visit for a day. Yeah. But I wonder how people who live there get by. Right. Why? Because all, all the shops are like them things that you go in and it's like a little pebble with a a pebble stuck on the top and it says Hastings on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So every shop does that. If you want bread and milk, you, you don't it's, it's murder. Yeah. There, there must be a supermarket. I didn't see any. Seriously, it's all novelty things like that. Yeah. And then when yeah. I got back into London- <laughs> Their houses. Yeah, yeah. Just covered in pebbles and like seashells yeah. and stuff. Oh, not rock for tea again. <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, right, it's, it's the first time I've sort of noticed somewhere like that when you go, what do you do if you, you know, you just want some Brillo pads or whatever. I wa I'm walking in London- Never concern me that. <laughs> Never needed Brillo pads in my life. No, but you know what I mean, the sort of things that- Yeah. It's a bit tricky to find, but in London, you know, you've got a coverage. Yeah. Now, the weird thing is, I was walking home from- we went had a drink the other night, right? Yeah. Walking down the road, and there was a shop that just sold, in London, just sold chess pieces. Yeah. Is that the one on Great Portland Street? Round the corner from it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's. 
I don't think that's well, mental. I remember being in Brighton once and seeing a shop and all it sold was fo the foam you put inside cushions. Yeah, there's one of those up Pentonville Road. But I don't know who opens a shop I like know, that. I know where these I'd things there's are. A, there's a hole in the market. Yeah. What was that shop we walked past yesterday? And it was like some really, really- Oh, um, uh, chef uniform shop. <laughs> yeah. It's down Dean Street. Yeah. And I, I tell you what, I opened a chef uniform. Ma mainly sort of check trousers and white hats. <laughs> yeah. But there must be a lot of chefs around. <laughs> I'm eating all the time. Someone's making the food. Yeah. The, the funny thing is, on the chef's shop, right, they mustn't yeah. have been doing that well. And someone must have, you know, the businesses must have, the bosses must have been sat there going, not really working this, is it? Yeah, right? people only buy one chess set yeah. in their life. Yes. Right. Yeah, but the funny thing is, on the door it's just said, come in and browse. <laughs> Which I thought was odd. Did right? you? No, it was short. Right. <laughs> but, the, but the funny thing is, the funny thing is, right, so you can imagine them sat there going, oh, not doing that well. And it's changed, they've actually changed the name of the shop now. Yeah. And now it says, chess, chess and bridge. Right, they've had to explain. So they've opened it up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But still. What do you buy for bridge, if not I don't know. cards? The I don't know. I don't know, I don't play bridge, but I don't know, I don't think you need a lot of stuff for bridge except a pack of cards. I remember going uh, A table. When I was on Three friends. On Go holiday on. once in Devon, past a shop. I don't know, if you ever need it, if you ever need an antique marionette, <laughs> 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 let me know, okay. I know where there's a shop. Okay, yeah. Antique marionettes! I know. Again, you only need one, and this is a But I want to know who goes into this business. Well, son, what are you doing? Going to university to do law, father. Well, there's a factory there that makes the little plastic bits that goes on the end of chair legs. Do you want to take <laughs> yeah, it over from yeah. me? We're not really, no. It's all set up. Yeah. It's all set up. Oh, God. All right, Dad, but just for a couple of years. Uh, Someone's got to make them. Someone's I know. Make the little plastic bits that go on the end of chairs. Well, if you uh, make them, call us on the <laughs> one two three four nine seven three four. <laughs> Weird though, isn't it? Weird. Weird though, isn't it? Right. Listen. Uh, songs of phrase answers next. We'll go. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Play it once more so that people have got a chance to actually enter. Hang on. Keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. Oh, I can't. Be Should talking. be ready, Carl. This All is right. terrible. Here we go. From. Right. That is the well-known phrase, da Daddy's never gonna stop robbing telephone box. <laughs> the well-known <laughs> phrase. And we're looking for, uh, the songs, I think. Huh? I don't care. Right. Well, uh, tell me where it all went wrong. Hello, Hello Dean. Hello, Dean. Hello, Dean. Libertines on XFM 104.9. <laughs> I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. Over there is Carl Cayman Pilkers. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be great for heart. You really would. Wouldn't would. I? You really Virgin, would. Virgin, I'd probably be. I'd probably, but it was Radio 2 would be my first. Oh, all one. It's Late night station. one would be good. All good stations. All professional stations. Yeah. Four all weeks to go. Audience, Four weeks audience. to go. Before we may give up or we may come back. Okay. Who knows? It's all up to Carl. Cayman Pilkoids. <laughs> <laughs> Can I uh, just extend an apology? Uh, it was a little bit crass earlier, and I made some unsavoury remarks about Radio 1 DJ Chris Moyles. I'd like to apologise. Funny man, funny man Chris Moyles. I'd like to apologise for that, but uh, it gave me an idea. You, the listeners, who do you hate? <laughs> um, email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. I just think that we've never really used uh, XFM as a kind of, well, as a research tool, really, and it seems to me that we got we can get great opportunities. And it's here. this, we, we don't sort of do this thing, we don't go on there and sort of like slag off other people and, and people in the public eye. Well, we, we sort of, we pick on targets that, 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 that are, can't you, fight back. helpless, the elderly, you know, people <laughs> suffering in some way that really, really, and particularly we don't want to pick on people like Chris Moles who's got a big platform, much exactly. bigger platform. We want people who can't answer back. Yeah, we want, yeah, so, um, who that's do you us, hate? That's us. Who do you hate? And we don't want, I don't want people you went to school with or your Do you boss. know what I hate, Steve? Who do you hate, Rick? Right, my top three, just in your top three, would be Hitler, yeah. Mussolini, and General Pinochet. Really? No, probably Moylesy, Harry Potter, and Jamie Oliver. Nice. But what are your top three? No, don't make them comical. Don't make them. These are the people that wind you up. When you see them on TV, if you hear them on the radio, if you see them in a magazine, they just, oh, they make your kind of blood boil. Might be us. It could be us. Well, I mean, uh, I'm you know, expecting we, that. We know that. We, yeah, yeah. We're not stupid. We could take it as red that it's us. Yeah. And then if anyone yeah, Let's us. assume it's us, so we want other people. Yeah. yeah. But we just want, I want to draw up the, the top lit, the top five people. I don't want to hear things like Tony Blair and Jeffrey Archer and fascism. No. Just people who make your flesh crawl for no, for no fault of their own. 
Well, well, really? Well, sometimes they're in because yeah, they're, they're you know, yeah. talentless or fat. But that'd be good. But, but that'd be a good long, long-term poll. When over the next four weeks, and then, then in four weeks' time, we go, we go. Well, we're off. We're yeah. in the top ten. Exactly. But here are the other nine. So I, I think it's just genuinely going to be quite, uh, quite interesting. So Ricky Dotjavez at XFM dot co dot uk. Maybe who you hate and why? It's like g giving a reason in the diary room. Yeah. That you got. You can't just nominate someone. You've got to say and why. Sure. But if you, you can't know. be bothered to write and why, just nominate. Yeah. Because that means just we've got a lot of reading to do if they start doing that, Rick. Yeah. Keep it down to one sentence. Yeah. You know, so, so, so the reason to be, you know, so and so because they can't walk. Something like that. Sure. Maybe. Now then, uh, we were playing earlier Songs of Phrase. Um, we have had, I mean, the, the, a the, the answers I could literally count on the fingers of one hand. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> now the right answer is even less so. But, um, do you want to play it once more, Carl? Oh, God. <laughs> From there was uh, <clears throat> seven songs in there. Right. Read them out. Go on. What are they? It was a. Uh, oh, have you ever got it written down? I can remember them. Daddy Cool. Right. Bonnie M. Bonnie M. Yeah. Uh, Never gonna. Give you from up. Rick, Rick Ashley. Ashley. Yeah. Uh, never gonna. Um. Write them down. Stop. Sam Brown. Right. Robin was, uh, Miss Robinson by Simon and Garfunkel. Mrs. Robinson. Yeah. Uh, hang on a minute. That's not Robin. Oh. From, From Russia We Love, Matt Monroe. Right. Telephone. Telephone hanging on the telephone, Blondie. Right. And then Box. Living in a box. By <laughs> living in, <laughs> in a box. box. Well, listen, no, Brilliant. I don't think anyone got them all right. No. If you did get them all right, I'm sorry, but I gave up checking the emails a long, long time ago. <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna give it... <laughs> I'm gonna give it to Michelle Flower because she got a few of them right. <laughs> <laughs> so well, well done, she got a lot right. Though. That's yeah. really well done. Good, well done. Yeah. She got five out of seven. So well done, Michelle. And uh, you get all those great prizes. Incidentally, um, we mentioned that uh, Stargate SG1. I'm yeah. sure you look forward to that, Michelle. That yeah. features uh, Richard Dean Anderson. Had a lot of emails. People saying, "Is that the same Richard Dean Anderson or Dickie Anders that used to email in and said he loved the show?" What's happened to Dickie Anders? Now, I've not heard from Dickie for ages. So Dickie, if you're listening, Richard Anderson, if anyone knows Richard Anderson, what's happened to him? Well, I think we. You know he's top three. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, D Dicky Anders, if you're in, if you're still out there, get in touch with Dicky Anders. Anders, it was also right. Yeah. So so yeah. Anders. I just was going to say, you know, you're talking about people who annoy you and that. Yeah. Like, not many sort of celebrities annoy me because I think, well, some people like them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But things that affect me, like the builders. Right? You're a builders, philosopher. Go on. The builders annoy me, right? Sure. Yeah. And you could say that's a bit of stereotyping, but. All the people who have met who have been builders have always annoyed me, right? So that's- I'd That's because they've been working on your house in your space. I mean, that's not- that's like all the builders that have been round your flat and making a noise when you're trying to get some sleep have annoyed you. Hmm. Well that- Brilliant. But also someone in the office in the week, right, who works there. Yeah. He's a good lad, named Lenny, right? He's yeah. called Lenny. Uh, he proposed to his missus yeah. using XFM. So well, like he, he popped in, he popped in Zoe's show, right? His girlfriend sat out there, she didn't know what was going on, she was asked to come in. Even right? she wasn't listening, she was out there. <laughs> she, she, she probably had a Walkman on or something. Yeah. <laughs> but just, just that, <laughs> she was just to Jono. <laughs> <laughs> he had yeah. to fax Jono with the request. <laughs> <laughs> Dear John, yeah. I'm broadcasting from <laughs> XFM at the moment. Can oh my girlfriend's my... listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, London's heart one a six by two. Great stuff. But it's, it's just that thing of like abusing your position. I think annoys mm -hmm. me. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Because if he, I just was thinking, if he worked for a cab company, would he have done that over? I, I that's what that's one of my hates. I mean? People abuse. Do you know what I hate? Dictators who have just sort of like they've got there by unfair means. Now they're sort of like hurting the like little people and that. Really? And, yeah, that's what I <laughs> hate that. Most. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I don't like? What? Famine. <laughs> no, it winds me right up. <laughs> Famine and disease. Oh, it's so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> Tune from Wilco. This is called I'm the Man Who Loves You from their album Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. XFM 104.9. Who do you hate? Ricky Dodger Bays, XFM.co.uk. Uh -huh. Fascists. Isn't that brilliant? The Van Dando, all my life. Beautiful. On XFM 104.9. Well, that's nearly it. It's the big one. It's what people tune in for.
at, they probably tune in about ten to these days, for Monkey News with, uh, Carl Pilkington. Can we hear the jingle? Only four to go. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news! <laughs> <laughs> right, this one's about a, uh, it's been emailed in to me. Right. right. I haven't really had time to check it out this week. No, been, you're joking. Been busy. Ooh, been busy. I hope it's not stupid. Um, goes back to 1908 and the person saying it's, you know, it's a good story and that and uh, they're surprised they haven't picked up on it yet, right? <laughs> uh, the Olympics, right? Yeah. Um, in 1908 yeah. in London. Yeah. Apparently it was meant to happen in, in Italy, but it was cancelled. Don't know why, right? And it happened in London. Yeah. Anyway. 400 metres, right, it was meant to, uh, there was a fella who was, who was gonna do the run, right, and the favourite to win it was this Bulgarian guy, right, it right. was like a new Okay, uh, these, these are the few things it cannot be. One, he injures himself so a monkey steps in and wins. Uh, two, he does a drugs test, it turns out that he is a monkey. Um, so if it's either of those, Right, I'm gonna go mad. So anyway, so the fella, right, this this favourite, everyone's putting the money on him, thinking, yeah, he's gonna do it. Gonna is he hairy? Nice is this bloke hairy? So anyway, so the race happens. Yeah. And everybody's lined up, ready to run. And you know, everyone's saying, yeah, he's gonna win, he's gonna win. And suddenly, a bit of murmuring going on, people going, oh, what's going on here? Mm, right. He's eating a banana. <laughs> and well, there's a fella, there's a fella in the lane next to him. Yeah. Right, he's going up. Who's that? He doesn't look familiar. Oh, Christ, Carl. Keep going. Right. Doesn't look familiar. Who's he? Yeah. You know, weird. What's weird, going on? It? What's going on? What's yeah. going on? Yeah. What is it? What is it? Or who is it? I mean, or not what is it? So they go in. <laughs> so they say, well, he might not be that any good. Do you know what I mean? He might not be good. He might. It's just a bit short. Doesn't he's, matter. He's only three foot six, and he's hunched over on his knuckles. So I didn't uh, realise it was fancy dress. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I, don't, I don't think he's gonna be any good. <laughs> so, so the race starts. Oh, he's putting his finger up his ass. That's weird for runners to do that before a race. It's weird. Isn't it? Yeah. Race starts. Yeah. The fella that no one recognises wins it. People go, what, what, what's gone on here? Yeah, sure. Do you yeah. know what I mean? We yeah. had our money on the favourite, what's gone on? Who yeah. is this guy? Yeah. Anyway, he stood up there, right? He's, he's looking well happy. Yeah. He's lifting the trophy and everything. <laughs> right. right. Long arms, long arms, that trophy's higher than- So God. anyway- He's so only three foot, but the trophy's nine foot in the air with those long arms. <laughs> so, so I'm suspicious, go on. They had the, they had the picture in the paper the next day. Sure. And everyone's going, yeah, he's, he was fast and everything, but- Quite hairy for a run. Oh, for f- I'll tell you come what, on, no. come quite, on. quite hairy for a run, because normally they shave themselves, don't they, to s make them faster and no. they go, how did he manage it? It's really hairy and that. So anyway, he wins the stuff, he walks away with a cup, the people who are in charge of the running, or like the, uh, the Oli Olympic committee, look further into it, turns out it was a chimp. Right, keep talking. Right. No, don't keep talking. Shut, Shut up. up. Shut up. This is monkey news. If you can't handle the news- It's news from 1909 and I haven't heard about a chimp winning the Olympics. <laughs> right, be quiet. What happened there then? 400 metres, right? Now Don't the thing is- Don't talk shit. The Please, only thing was, Ricky. it took so long for the Olympic Committee, right, to find out that it was a monkey. It was going man- it was like going, like manic. It went into loads of races, it was picking up loads of, like- Don't races. shut up! Right? It became a celebrity, it was doing, <laughs> it was doing endorsements on TV. Don't talk shit! Uh, it said, uh, he managed to win the right. same race four years later in Athens because- How did he get to Athens? But it's, it's a joke! They're winding you up, Carl! Weird. It's not weird! weird it's in- it? right. I do not believe it. Well, that's okay. That's- so. there's only three of them to go then. Right, because we're probably all leaving in four weeks time and that's the end, I am- I've got to get onto a sort of mainstream radio station because I don't think there's any other sort of tin pot place like this, is there? No. Um, so I'm gonna clear up my act a little bit. I've got an album from the, uh, Capital Radio Library, um, and it's the best, um, punk album in the world ever, so if Capital is listening I can- I'm just gonna show that I can do a mainstream I'm gonna play a classic song and I'm gonna right, announce okay, it yeah, right yeah, and everything, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, If you get a job on, on a decent station, you'll take me with you, will you? We're a pair. Brilliant. So, uh, okay, here we go, right. If anyone's listening, just to show that I can do mainstream radio, okay? okay? Well, that's all- Okay, let me just- Well, if you're getting no, nervous, no, no, you're okay, nervous, okay. so come on. Shall I- shall I get a monkey no, okay. and do it? It's alright, it's alright. Okay. Well, that's about all there is time for today. You've been listening to Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. Across the way, K-Man Pilkers. Uh, we're going all the way back now, a classic song from the late 1970s, and this is Devo with Mongoloid. Mm -hmm.